Hello everyone, my name is Elena Massara and I'm a postdoc at the Waterloo Center for Astrophysics. My talk is about Mark power spectra and how we can use them to constrain cosmology with a large-scale structure. The distribution of matter and galaxies in the universe can inform us about the properties of dark matter and dark energy, the neutrino mass scale and the initial conditions of the universe. And all this information is described by few cosmological parameters. Studying cosmology directly at the galaxy field level is very challenging. Therefore, summary statistics are used to describe the galaxy field and to perform the cosmological analysis in galaxy surveys. Thus, what are the best statistics to retrieve the information from the large-scale structure? For a Gaussian field, all the information is contained in its two-point statistics. However, the low redshift matter and galaxy fields are non-Gaussian due to gravitational evolution. Therefore, there is additional information beyond the two-point functions that are commonly used as standard probes in cosmology. Many additional statistics have been proposed to retrieve the additional information beyond the two-point functions. Among these are the higher order statistics, such as bispectrum and trispectrum, and different summary statistics, such as voids and peaks but also nonlinear transformation of the galaxy field itself. And among this last group are the Mark power spectra that are the subject of this talk. Before going into the details of Mark power spectra, let's consider the motivation that brought us to consider them in the first place. And in particular, the fact that low-density regions are very good laboratories to study cosmology for many reasons. First, low-density regions are unverialized and they are expected to retain most of their initial cosmological information. Additionally, they are very sensitive to diffuse components, such as neutrinos and dark energy. Indeed, neutrinos, on the right, have a very smooth and diffuse density field that is very close to the background. On the other hand, the cold dark matter, on the left, has small-scale structures and reaches much higher densities in halos. Therefore, neutrinos are a negligible fraction of the total matter in halos, but they are a considerable fraction of the total matter in low-density regions, since these are the regions that are devoid of cold dark matter. Therefore, low-density regions are expected to be more sensitive to the neutrino mass scales than high-density regions. And finally, Low-density regions can be sensitive to potential modification of gravity since screening mechanisms are inefficient in them. Now, two questions arise naturally. Do standard two-point statistics depend on low-density regions? And how can we eventually modify them to encompass more information from these regions? About the first question, two-point correlation functions count the excess of pairs at a given distance. Since most galaxies are in high-density regions, the low-density ones contribute little to this statistic. A possible way to make the two-point function depending more on low-density regions is multiply each point by a mark, m, that depends on the local density around that point, and such that it upweights the points that are in low-density regions compared to the ones in high-density regions. Effectively, this consists in transforming the initial density field and taking the two-point correlator of the final transformed one. This statistic is what we call Mark correlation function or Mark power spectrum in Fourier space. We consider a mark that has a functional form shown here and that depends on three parameters, a length r, an exponent p and a constant delta s. The field delta R is the density field smooth with a top hat at scale R, and it describes the local density around a given point X. The exponent P can be positive or negative. Positive values will upweight low density regions, while negative values will upweight high density regions. Here I'm showing on top a plot of the dark matter field in an embodied simulation and on bottom the corresponding transformed mark field. The mark used to perform this transformation has a positive exponent p, and indeed all the low-density regions in the upper panel displayed in dark blue are upweighted in the lower panel 
and shown in a lighter color. Then the mark power spectrum is the two-point correlator of the bottom field. In order to understand the transformation induced by the marks, we can look at the cross-correlation between the initial and transformed field. In this plot, the black line shows the unmarked power spectrum, and the purple line is the cross-power spectrum when the exponent p is positive, so that high-density regions are upweighted in the transformed field. In this case, the cross-power spectrum is larger than the power spectrum itself. Let's now consider positive exponent, so that low-density regions are instead upweighted. In these cases, the cross-power spectra are below the power spectrum shown in black, as if this transformed field had an effective bias on large scales that is smaller than 1 and negative for larger values of the exponent p. We can check if low-density regions contain large cosmological information and if the mark power spectrum that upweight low-density regions can effectively retrieve it. First, we consider mark power spectra of the matter field. And we quantify the information content in them using the Fisher matrix formalism. Given a set of parameters and observed statistics, the Fisher matrix gives the variance sigma squared of a, an optimal unbiased estimator for the parameter theta. The lower the variance or error, the better a certain parameter can be constrained by con the considered statistic. The Fisher matrix is computed using the covariance matrix C and the derivatives of the statistics with respect to the parameters. We computed these ingredients using the Quixote suite that contains more than 40,000 simulations in a 1 gigaparsec box with 512 cube particles and additional neutrino particles in some of the boxes. Of these sets of simulations, we use 15,000 realizations run in the fiducial cosmology to compute the covariance matrices and simulation with only one parameter varied above or below its fiducial value to compute the derivatives numerically. For each realization of the density field, we can compute multiple mark transformation and the corresponding mark power spectra. So we chose five values for each of the three mark parameters and combination of them allowed us to compute 125 different mark power spectra per simulation. We computed them using both the cold dark matter field, called CB, and the cold dark matter plus neutrino field, indicated with M. We then calculated the Fisher matrices and the constraints for all the cosmological parameters for these mark power spectra, and we chose the mark model that gave us the better constraints on the neutrino mass scale. The selected mark is shown on top of the slide and you can notice that it has positive exponent, meaning that it upweights low-density regions. In the plot, I'm showing in orange the results for the power spectrum of the cold dark matter that we use as a benchmark to quantify the constraint for the mark power spectrum that here I'm showing in green. So you can see that mark power spectrum can tighten the power spectrum constraints on all cosmological parameters by a significant amount. Now, these results have been obtained using the statistics up to Kmax equal to 0.5 h over megaparsec, but we can also look at the marginalized errors as a function of Kmax. Here, the dashed lines show the results for the unmarked power spectrum where gray indicates the statistics of the CB field and magenta of the M total matter field. So considering large Kmax means including more modes in the analysis and in principle more information. However, the information in the power spectrum saturates at Kmax equal 0.2. The solid lines now show the errors obtained with the MAR power spectrum applied to the CB field and the M field. In both cases, the MAR power spectrum can retrieve additional information when adding more K modes beyond 0.2. Also, comparing solid and dashed lines of the same color 
we can see that the MARC power spectrum contains more information than the standard power spectrum. The constraints decrease by a factor of 2 for the CB field and by a factor of 4 to 10 for the M field, with an incredible improvement equal to about 50 times for the neutrino mass scale. And you can see all the detailed numbers uh, in the table below. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the 3D distribution of the total matter field, here called M, but galaxies do trace the cold dark matter field, CB. And in order to test the information in Mark power spectra of the galaxy field, we perform the similar analysis in, on the Molino Galaxy Catalog. The Molino Galaxy Catalog are built upon the Quixote simulations by populating halos with galaxies via an halo occupation distribution framework, with this HLT having five parameters to describe the galaxy by a scheme and allowing us to measure the monopole and quadrupole of the standard and marked power spectra in Regi space. The catalogs have been constructed with some fiducial values for the HLT parameters to calculate covariances and variation from the fiducial values to compute numerical derivatives. Therefore, now we have six cosmological parameters and five HLD parameters in the Fisher analysis. This plot shows the results for the 2D constraints uh, obtained with multiples. In orange, you can see the constraints coming from the unmarked or standard power spectrum up to k equal to 0.5. In green are the results for the Mark power spectrum with the parameters uh, shown on top of the slide. The Mark power spectrum contains information beyond the power spectrum for all the cosmological parameters and it can tighten the constraints on the HLD parameters controlling the central galaxies. On the other hand, the standard power spectrum can better constrain the other HLD parameters controlling the satellite galaxies that you can see on bottom. This behavior is expected since satellite galaxies are in high mass halos that are more likely to be in high density regions. On the other hand, low density regions contain low mass halos that have at most a central galaxy. We can look at the marginalized errors as a function of k max. Here, the results for the power spectrum are displayed in black, while colored lines show the results for different Mark models as explained in the table below. All Mark power spectra outperform the standard power spectrum and can retrieve more information from more small scales. We can perform a combined analysis using the standard power spectrum and the four Mark power spectra selected in the previous slide, which weight the galaxy field in four different ways and in principle are also sensitive to the cosmological parameters in different ways. The table shows how tight the constraints are when combining all these statistics compared to using the power spectrum alone, and all errors are tightened by 2-3 times with sigma 8 signaling an improvement of 6 times. The performance of Mark power spectra in our analysis can be optimistic since it used the Fisher formalism without survey geometry and systematics, and the numerical derivatives are noisy. However, future surveys such as DAISY, Euclid and the Roman Telescope are going to observe a much larger number density of galaxies, allowing them to trace much better low density regions, and in particular the inner part of voids, than what the Molino catalogs could do. Having more galaxies in low-density regions will allow future surveys to exploit even better the potential of Mark power spectra that equate low-density regions. We can now try to understand why Mark power spectra contain information beyond the power spectrum. Perturbation theory can help us answering this question. Indeed, the Mark field is the product of the initial field and the Mark, and the mark itself is a function of the local density delta r defined on scale r. Under some hypothesis, we can expand the mark in powers of the local density delta r. Therefore, the two-point function of the marked field contains higher order statistics of the initial unmarked field, meaning that they contain non-Gaussian information. We can then use perturbation theory to describe both delta and delta r, 
and obtain a model for more power spectra in the framework of effective field theory. Here is a comparison between measurements and simulations and effective field theory predictions for a particular Mark power spectrum of the matter field, both in real and wretched space, that shows percentage accuracy up to scales of validity of the theory. Going back to why Mark power spectra contain information beyond the power spectrum, one first motivation is that they contain higher point statistics of the unmarked density field. And in particular, they contain some configurations of the bispectrum. And the previous analysis performed on the Molino simulations show that the bispectrum can improve the power spectrum constraints on all cosmological parameters. Moreover, adding non Gaussian information to the two point statistics of the Mark field is complemented by its removal from his higher point statistics, which leads to a more diagonal covariance matrix. Indeed, most of the Mark power spectra that upweight low density regions have almost diagonal covariances, which means that beans are not correlated and information content is increased. And this is also in agreement with other transformations, such as the log transformation, that makes the field more Gaussian. Finally, Mark power spectra can boost the information coming from the very low density regions, the cosmic voids. To summarize, I presented two Fisher analyses with the Mark power spectra that upweight low density regions and showed that they improve the parameter constraints beyond the power spectrum. When considering the galaxy field, they give six times tighter constraints on sigma 8 and two to three tighter constraints on the other cosmological parameters. Upcoming surveys will probe larger volumes and larger galaxy number density than those considered in our analysis, allowing these surveys to better explore low density regions and potentially improve the performance of Mark power spectra. As a next step, we are building a simulation-based inference framework to perform the cosmological analysis with Mark power spectra in galaxy surveys. This framework will allow us to form more modeling, statistics systematics and survey geometry, and to use the small scales that cannot be described by analytical models. Thank you for watching.